All right, everyone. Welcome back. We are Pull on the Call podcast. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. <laughs> and today we are so excited to be here with yeah. the amazing Clo, who is a pole coach and pole wear designer, clothing designer. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for taking the time to meet with us today and to share your story. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Can you let everybody know where you're um, meeting us from and what time it is? I was so shocked when you were telling us. <laughs> um, so I'm from Portsmouth in the UK, which is literally the tiny, tiny island, United Kingdom. And I'm, well, we're not right at the bottom, but like in the middle at the bottom, so near the water. So, and it's wow. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. here. So, <laughs> about six hours difference from, from you guys to so six hours after. So, yeah, that That's sounds awesome. Water. I love that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, what's the pole community like out there? In the UK, it's pretty good. In Portsmouth, there's not quite so much. Uh, so I'll probably end up talking about it more later. But my goal this year is to open a studio because there isn't really any here. Like a lot of them during COVID just went no and just uh, ended up closing. So it's building it back up again since the people that did close studios kind of sort of went yeah this isn't for me anymore anyway so it's sort of like you're, we've got this sort of new breed of people coming in so and it's good good so Thanks. excellent that's exciting <laughs> i can't wait to see what happens in a year for you that's awesome it, it's something i've like thought about and planned for the last like five years like every it'll be like every at beginning of the year i'll be like oh i'll sort this out sort this out and then i chicken out of <laughs> it <laughs> but I've been teaching more this year. I've got a lot more clients. That I'm like, actually, I feel like it could work now. So I'll give it. Yeah. A yes. I love that. My character's <laughs> broke. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I guess we should start at the beginning. Um, how did what brought you to pole dance? Uh, so I started pole about nine years ago. Um, basically, I wanted a way to get fit, and I found the idea of going to the gym really boring. Like the idea of like the repetition of doing the same thing over and over again. Even even though I'm autistic, I'm also a bit ADHD. With I need to do different things because if I just do the same thing over and over again, the mind just wanders, and yeah, it's no good for me. So. Yeah, about nine years ago, I went to a class with I think it was about three other friends, and I was the only one that stayed on. Basically, I mean that's normally the way it goes. Normally, you sort of get like that one out of ten rate of people in their first class with us. They'll come back, and yeah, just kind of stuck with it, um, and started a business from it as well. So basically, my whole life has gone from that to pole. So, <laughs> so what did, what did you do before? So I had my business Hoodlum Fang anyway, but I was doing um, leggings for the roller derby community. So I don't know if you have a roller derby team where you are, but yeah, I was doing things for no. the roller wenches and sort of teams further afield. But it got to that point where roller derby was getting very expensive because it was getting more mainstream. So they couldn't necessarily afford to buy clothes anymore that were a bit more expensive, was more all the money was going on skates. And so I sort of transitioned a bit into pole because the studio I was going to were like, we well, want shorts in your print. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll give it a go. And I think generally speaking, people in pole have a bit more money to spend on clothes because generally you have your classes, your shoes, and if you buy a pole, that's good for 10 years. <laughs> Whereas with Derby, um, if you buy a helmet for 50 quid or about seventy dollars, eighty dollars. Um, once you use it once, and if you have a fall, you have to replace it, even if you've only just bought it. So, yeah, the replacement wow. of, of um, yeah, a replacement of your equipment is a lot more than with poles. So, that's where the money goes. <laughs> oh, gee, that's a, that sounds expensive, but I can't, I can't yeah. even imagine being a roller derby, a roller derby. That is. So scary. I've always wanted to try it. Kudos to you. <laughs> I never sort of got good enough to actually do the playing part. I was more like skating, minimum skills, and 
Yeah, I, I say I'm not good with wheels on my feet. Heels? <laughs> Fine. Wheels on the feet? No, just no. <laughs> I good did it more for the social. The social element of it was a lot more fun than the actual skating. <laughs> Thank you for the Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> <Glowing> so, <review. laughs> so, do you still make? Um, I remember you mentioned that you started making leggings for the roller derby. Do you still get into that? Do that as a side hustle? Or a I have, I have quite a few people that still nine years on that still like I love your leggings and I'm just gonna keep buying them. So I do have some yeah. good loyal people, good little people. So it's nice. So. Yeah, that is awesome. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about your brand? I was looking at your website and you have like full clothes, knee pads, shoe covers, yeah. like everything. So start, I started the business originally because I studied fashion and textiles at university and wanted to sort of, it, normally when you do any sort of fashion course, it's either you move to London and work there or you start your own business and I didn't really want to move to London so I was like oh, I guess I have to start my own business and just gradually build it up from there uh, but most of my stuff is things that are like prints I've designed everything is designed by me because that's my main focus and then all of the um, items are also made by me um, I try to keep as inclusive as possible so I'm always sort of branching out where I need to be where people tell me oh this is really needed in the industry I'm like yeah it is let's let's do something about it and get it out there um especially for like size inclusivity um gender affirming clothes as well so yeah, it's just trying to build a bit more community in the outfits because a lot of it is very straight sized sort of oh, everyone wants like really strappy things. And it's like, if you're a bit neurodivergent and have issues with textures, you're a bit like, oh, these straps are just restricting me. So <laughs> having nice soft things as well is good to have, so. That's awesome. Um, and you said you make all of it? Like, how do you find the time to do that? <laughs> yeah. Ye years of practice to sort of get it wow. all right there. So, uh, it is more of a cottage industry, my business. It's it's less of a churn it out as quickly as possible and more of a custom thing that... So it's enough to keep me happy. And as someone that is on the autism spectrum, I can't work for anyone else. Like having a rigid job where people expect certain things from you just never worked for me. Whereas if I've got, oh, I'm having a bad day today, I can take the day off. Or if I'm having a really good day I can take the whole day to do sort of things I can chop and change so it, it does work um to do it the way I'm doing it so I love that and we will have the link to your website in the comments for the YouTube and podcast for everyone <laughs> <laughs> yes and do you, you ship internationally I do yeah I think the furthest way place I've shipped to was the French Polynesia Wow. Yeah, I, don't even I, know I saw that come through because whenever <laughs> I get a new country through, I'm like, where is it? I must find it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. That's so cool. Do you, is it ever like overwhelming with the custom orders? Do you have to like limit it or how does that work? Um, I'm generally quite good with time management anyway. Um, so I generally, I do all right. If I get a little bit overwhelmed, normally I, most of my customers are very understanding. If I'm like, sorry, it's going to be a week later than what I said it was. Or if I have an issue with suppliers, most people are like, oh, it's cool. Like, it's custom, it's custom made. I'm happy to wait the extra week if it means that you're not burnt out. So I, I got a good, I got a good bunch of people that are my customers. So it, it's nice. That's awesome. That I love that. Awesome. Do you still, I mean, running such uh, an amazing business, do you still get the time to poll and teach and coach? I do, yes. Um, I teach about eight hours, ten hours a week um, at the moment because I don't have the studio space. It's generally out of my home studio, so we've got the, the poll for those that are on YouTube, we've got the little room here. That if anyone follows me on Instagram, this is a different angle of the room. So you can see the corner, which is covered and all the shoes on the mantelpiece as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, I teach from home as well. So I teach private lessons. Most of my clients for private lessons are folks that don't necessarily feel comfortable going to a class for whatever reason, whether it's because they're um, 
uh, neurodivergent or they um, like just sort of struggle in social situations or they just don't feel comfortable because they're worried that they're going to be fat shamed or generally they come to me because they know that I'll create that safe space for them. Uh, I also teach at the local uni as well. So that's like my get out the house and go and go and teach for them as well. So well. you teach, you teach Paul there at, at the uni. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. They have like, wow. I don't, yeah, I don't know how it is in the U S but in the UK, you have like societies that are like, um, based around interests and things. So you have like the, the pole dance society, the rugby football, society i think they have an american football society actually so yeah um so yeah i teach for the society and it's basically it's like a hobby like an, an elective kind of thing that you can do at the uni and that's that's where i teach i teach them there so that's, that's awesome. awesome we have we have similar things here but not for poe unfortunately yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> right but, and do you Sorry, I said Portsmouth um, Port Pole Society is one of the biggest societies. Apparently, it has the me the most members. Wow! Wow! So, <laughs> so it's popular. It's popular. Yeah. That's incredible. And, and do you teach um on the stage poles or how does that work? Yeah, the stage poles. So, <laughs> oh man, yeah. But mo it's mostly beginners. Most people that are there are beginners, so it's not quite so bad. So you're not like mm -hmm. worrying too much about. Oh God, I got an invert on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we talked to another uh, another um pole coach who also works at a, a college and she also sets up all the the stage poles for everyone i just think that's yeah. so amazing such yeah. dedication to do that for everyone <laughs> 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 oh yeah. that's yeah, awesome I, I get i get it quite good is they set up the poles for me because they're insured to set them up whereas i'm not and i'm like I don't know how to set them up anyway, so I'm just going to leave and just I teach and then I go. Oh, <laughs> so that's, like, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Even better. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it works out the way that it works for me, so I have to do the least amount of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, how um, long have you been have... A, a pole coach? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Just how long have you Ask all yes. the so many questions. Yeah. Um. How how long have you been a pole coach, and and do, did you have any specific training to to become one or? Uh. So I've been a pole coach for about three years. It will be three years in February. I literally passed my beginner qualification just as COVID hit. <laughs> I was like, oh, am I going to be able to use this now? <laughs> um. <laughs> So yeah, I got my beginner qualification. So I was mostly teaching beginners. Um, I got my intermediate qualification in November, just gone. Um, I'm also certified to teach heels. So I've got Spin City and the expert heels training as well. So yeah, I, I'm racking up the the um, qualifications. That is awesome. I need to yes. work on the heels one. I'm not very good with it <laughs> one day. <laughs> right? I'm in the middle of the heels one from expert. <laughs> it's really good. It is really good. Yeah. I, did, yeah, I did, I think it's the intensive one where you just like you're online. Um, And it was one of the first ones as well. So it was when Tiffany was doing it. It was so good. So yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I know. I think of, as all of us pole coaches, we are all like collecting the certifications. That's what I kind of feel uh -huh. like. <laughs> Yeah. what else yeah. do i want to do <laughs> it's good though. It, it broadens your knowledge it's good, it's good. yes a lot, a lot of moves that i really struggle with um and once i've done the certification i'm like oh that makes sense now and i can actually do it um i think for me it's because of a lot of my pole training is very sporadic like my my journey of how i got to where i am is i had a good foundation for beginners and then when I went, then I kind of went into intermediate and everyone else sort of skyrocketed and I just sort of did this like slow bumps and things. I like to call it team slow pole. Just do things very slowly. I say I've been doing pole for nine years. Probably one of my more advanced moves that I feel I can do is like a jade. I feel that's probably more the advanced yeah. aspect of it. Like things like Aisha, 
that that's not here yet and brass monkeys only just about here uh, <laughs> so the problem for me is i like to get it perfect before i'm like yeah i have that that that's mine now so yeah but um yeah my training's a bit sporadic because i sort of chopped and changed from different um different studios because first studio i was at i got banned um <laughs> for um, basically the woman that owned the gym didn't like the fact that I had a go at her because she um, walked in on a class when I was being spotted in something and I nearly fell and I got a bit angry about it and sort of, and then she was like, oh no, you're, you're upsetting me so you're not allowed back. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and since then it's very much, I've gone to different studios, even not, vibe with the teaching because it's either been a bit too quick or not enough has been explained because I'm a learner that likes to learn by listening to people so I need to listen to the full breakdown rather than right is the trick have a go I'm like what has happened <laughs> I don't know what's happened um and that or I've not felt comfortable because they were either transphobic I've had that in studios before when I've sort of been somewhere gone oh this is me and they've gone no we we're not we're not a fan of that like what, what would the children think so, oh jesus we're still on that uh, <laughs> so um so yeah my training's been a bit like a lot of my own training from bringing myself into moves and teaching myself because there isn't really anything here that has helped so another reason to open the studio <laughs> yes, I was just going to say, I'm sorry for that experience, but it just goes to show that there is a need for it in your area, and you're yeah. about to do it, you're doing good things. Yeah. Hell yeah, right, thank you for, for creating those safe spaces for everyone, because, yeah, right. it's so tough out there. I didn't have them when I started, like, well, when I started I did, but sort of midway through my journey, I had that sort of lost period of, like, is there really any reason to sort of stay in this area apart from like family because the pole community here just isn't it but i'm hoping to build it up so um i was speaking to kitty Valor um a little while ago and she was saying that she just because she she had a period in like i think it's like 2018 2019 when she just did all the studios in the uk were just flooded with her workshops and she just assumed there was no pole studios in the portsmouth area because no one booked her because that's the sort of vibe that there is it's very pole for fitness and yeah <laughs> uh, that's awful it's sad to hear that even in such a small community as pole that there can be how do you say non-acceptance or yeah. not as inclusive as we as it should be it's really sad mm -hmm. to hear yeah okay. we be that we be the change that we want to bring so that's that's my goal yeah. to yes. make it yeah. a bit more so everyone feels more included so yeah and, and you said you started teaching right after covid is that why um did you start doing just online classes or mostly mostly yeah and so i've got still got quite a few of my students from the covid times that still um stick with me and i found teaching online really sort of makes you explain things more because obviously you don't have that face to face oh watch me do it and and because obviously all the different angles unless you pick up your laptop and put in different places um so i find that's probably why i'm very much uh, i will talk it through a lot more probably than what most people need but for the person like me it's very welcomed so and then a lot of my students say that because i break things down so much like they'll try something at home themselves and then come into my lesson and go I tried this I can't do it and why and I'll literally just sort of give them this is the exact breakdown of how you do it and it's just that little bit in the middle that they're not getting that's crucial to get to the end goal and you just need to talk it through with some people so right it is very I love true online is that very different <laughs> yeah but I think that's awesome that you offer the online classes because I think a lot of Agreed. people do look for them and, you know, it's, it's important to have another option. Yeah, like some, of my, like... some of the best private um, classes that I did, like, during COVID were the online ones with, like, um, yeah. teachers that were from further away. Yeah. So, yeah. 
I feel right. like when COVID, when COVID kind of opened up or when everything started opening up, studios kind of took away the online option. Yes. Yeah. And I, I don't think that was a good marketing move for <laughs> the community. I, for a lot of them, I know it's because they don't like doing the online. I know what the a studio that I do go to for my own training that's about a, a city over from me, so it's quite far away, but I make it work. <laughs> I, need yeah. my own, I need my own classes. I make it work. Um, uh, she just did not like online lessons. She just didn't like the fact that everyone was on mute and it wasn't a vibe and it wasn't like she, and I think as well, like she sort of struggled because she couldn't sort of be there with people and like I look after them and nurture them. It felt a bit like clinical. So she basically, as soon as they could open up again, she got rid of that and was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going back to the studio. <laughs> I definitely oh, understand that because um, yeah. we have instructors who feel the same way. It yeah. also is sad because some um, students reach out to us and they have issues attending studios and they are so happy that when they find those small online opportunities. Yeah. So it's like a double-edged sword, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Mm. Um, um, you, do you have I a have a question. <laughs> 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 I was gonna ask, have, um, do you have any competition experience or um, performance experience? I know competitions are much different out there. Yeah, um, competitions are generally go just for the one competition. It's called the Authentic Pole Dance, so it's stripper, stripper style, stripper inspired, um, literally sort of like so stripper accepting the it's just the, it's the main one I go for because a lot of the competitions in the UK are very much very much sort of like no heels style ones and I have applied for a couple but I just haven't haven't got in for whatever reason um but um yeah that, that tends to be the one I go for and I, I travel for it as well because there's different heats in different parts of the country and I normally just go up to up north which is I'll, I'll say this, it's about five hours away and that's a travel for me, whereas some people are going to be like, that's not a journey, that's just down the road. <laughs> but you have to remember that UK is tiny. <laughs> it's small. It's it's like the size of a small state. It's so tiny. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I generally that's the only one I sort of go for. Uh, I'm trying to do a few more this year because um, there is a few more different ones that have come out that are more like, yeah, you can wear heels. So, it's cool um because i did sort of think to myself should i try and do a competition without heels but i don't know how i would get on <laughs> i don't know how i would do it i'd be like this is very strange this is not me at all <laughs> you could do a foot mount way yeah. too funny <laughs> foot grip like what what just foot grip is just not not there it's just <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I hate that one too. Anytime, like, anytime you're at a class and someone goes, we're going to do a Rico split, you're like, oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's so funny. There is everyone that's like that. I like the foot the foot grip, but that's funny when I'm like choreographing, I'm like, do I want to do a foot foot mask or do I want to wear my heel? <laughs> yeah. Too I've funny. seen some, oh. I've seen I've seen someone do a like a variation of a Rico split with heels and it's literally gone like in between. Yes. Wear my shoes already. Yeah. <laughs> and um, anyone that's seen the podcast knows this already. Uh, <laughs> and I just was sat there like I don't know how you're doing this, but you're staying up there, and I'm very impressed. <laughs> right? I always wondered if they put like a little like a sticky part underneath the no. I, I just... don't know. I honestly don't know. Um right? yeah. Because um, I definitely have seen people do it too, and I'm just like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> just hoping for wow. the best. <laughs> yeah, wow. no, but wow. <laughs> just a whole lot of no, but wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But you travel five five hours to go to a competition. That is, I would consider that a far far drive. To go. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But basically, I make a weekend of it. Like, I'll go up there. I'll spend some time. I'll see some friends because I've got quite a few friends that are sort of like online. Um, because most of my poll community is kind of online rather than local. Um, so I go up there, see them, maybe do a couple of classes, do um, do the competition, and then get a tattoo on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> no, normally how my holidays work 
<laughs> I love it. Too funny. <laughs> that sounds like I a perfect I noticed vacation. that you are outside of yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes so um back to the competitions you mentioned that you had to what was it apply for them and you didn't get in so competitions you have to literally apply for out there and they can tell you no mm -hmm. so <sighs> yeah just different ones like the authentic the, one of the reasons i do the authentics one is because it's just first come first serve put in your application you get in and it's quite there's quite a few like positions for people. I think most of the time it's about 10 per category. So it's, it's pretty big. Um, yeah. Whereas some of them, they only do five per category and you have to submit video entries. So you submit a video of either your routine or at least what you plan to do in, and they'll give you like a time limit as well. And the judges will even look at it. They'll score that video, and then whoever obviously gets the highest scores goes through, and then everyone else just gets feedback. Um, I did a competition recently. I did a video um, entry for a competition. I had the most random scores. Um, some of the scores were like it was out of a hundred, and I got like ninety six out of a hundred from one judge, which I was like, okay. And then the other judge scored me like sixty. I'm like. I don't think you understood what I was doing, so okay. <laughs> so it's <That's> fine. <laughs> so yeah, the That's chalk and awesome. the different judges that they get is yeah. Right, I'll That's never awesome. know what the judges are thinking. <laughs> no. I know. No. That's what, and the problem is sometimes you sort of do competitions. You look who's judging and think, right, I'm going to put that in because I know they like that. <laughs> so I'll get in to be able to do the competition <laughs> just to please that judge and it's a judge when you don't know them and you're like oh no I don't know what they really like <laughs> like I, just, I, do, I do a lot of like metal music and like um like punk music and stuff yeah. and I worry sometimes that some of the judges might be like oh god what's this like so jar like they're already off to a bad start because they don't like the music that you've chosen and it's yeah <laughs> not good judges That's awful. i know it's really frustrating how sometimes judges um take like one small bias or something and it yeah. really just fucks up everything else it is yeah. hard it is hard judging though i did judge a competition during covid and all the, and it's just different people like all the I did a, mm -hmm. I did like a beginner category and because of what I look for I look for like the performance element of it if they did something interesting that I was mm -hmm. like oh that that was really interesting sort of thing and also following the rules <laughs> <laughs> and I judged, I judged the competition and all the people that I thought yeah they should be in the top none of them were because the other judges is obviously gone for the other people. And I was like, but that one didn't follow the rules and uh, infuriating. So That's angry. Uh, <laughs> they so, made a little yeah. exception because of the popularity contest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think it's more because obviously we were all sort of same level judges as well. I think it's more they sort of saw, oh, that's a that looks um aesthetically pleasing. I'm like, yeah, but because one of the rules, I think one of the rules was like you had to do at least 30 seconds of floor work. And this this performer, bless her, all the stuff she did on the pole was amazing. But she obviously didn't like floor work. She literally ran from one pole to the other because she didn't want to be on the floor. And I'm like, cool, but that's not the rules. <laughs> Fair enough, you don't like doing floor work. Mm. That's fine. But just put 30, 30 seconds is the limit. You can literally just sort of be on the floor raise a leg <laughs> down slowly crawl over really slowly that's 30 seconds that's still yeah. that's still within right. the rules, so it's fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> right like one yeah, dramatic you know, look just like bolted across the room basically to the other pole and i was like so we're not going to see any floor work then okay okay <laughs> uh... so, but if, if you're not taught it you're not going to get any love for it. So yeah. you can just only assume that you taught any. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, are there any uh, poll performances in your area? Do you participate in any or create any? Or what's what's that like? Is it just... Um, 
I, I try to, I try really hard to sort of put the poll sort of out there, but no one seems to bite for it locally. Um, the only person that did, bless them, was a friend of mine that runs um, like an alternative club night. And we tried to, we're trying to do it there, but the problem is because it's so grassroots, they can't pay me, so I can't get a stage poll. And I tried to take my um, pressure mounted poll and it wouldn't fit. <laughs> Literally, I had, I've got so many extensions that none of them would fit. And I was like, sorry, mate. That's the <laughs> so worst. Oh, it's try, trying, it is, it, yeah, trying, trying times. <laughs> so it, it's just, it's finding the places more than anything. And I think a lot of places don't want to necessarily give poll the chance. And it is a bit like that in this area. It is there is very strange. Like I look at other places that do shows and they've got at least two or three pole performances. They get the stage pole. They're quite happy to hire it out. Whereas for me, it's sort of like, oh, they ask how much it is to hire it out. And I'm like, oh, well, it's normally this. And I'd have to add that onto my bill. And they're like, yeah, we can't budget for that. So sorry. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, you could be bringing something different and then you'd get more performers, but fair enough. Right, like sometimes we don't even realize that you have to like lug this like 600 pound piece of equipment in upstairs and like all the way around Mm -hmm. and then you have to perform on it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So, yeah. Yeah. And in the, in the UK, there's only a few places that actually hire them out and it's about the same price as how much they would pay you as a performer. So it's a bit like, I see why it doesn't, it isn't viable if you just got the one person, but at the same time, it's nice to have something a little bit different, I think. So, well, hopefully it will change in the future because I, I would love <laughs> like more pole performing opportunities. But you know, yeah, but didn't involve competitions too because yes. sometimes it's nice to just express. Mm. <laughs> yeah, um, there's quite a few in like Manchester. If we're sort of saying about low, like, um, sort of my sort of the country I live in. In the UK, um, I know Kitty Valor does a lot, and most of the ones she does are in Manchester, and there's I think there's quite a few in London as well. So, I'm not very familiar out there, but I <laughs> there's like the two, two main two main important cities. Right, <laughs> <laughs> <Like, laughs> I have a map <laughs> behind the Zoom here. I can click on. <laughs> <I> Pulls <laughs> up a map. <laughs> <laughs> too funny it sounds like the the poll situation is is very similar to ours um in in massachusetts here so mm-hmm. uh, like we're not like a big city or anything and people usually yeah. don't understand like why would you want to put a poll in this situation yeah. <laughs> but hopefully but soon. then if you go to boston if you go to boston it's like a whole different thing yeah yeah is, is it as I say I'm, I'm getting political is it something to do with like the political climate of like the area no maybe? I don't even know no because yeah. I think I think they're Boston no I think Boston and Springfield are both similar in political climate I think maybe the area our area is a little bit poorer okay and Boston Boston mm-hmm. is very much more richer uh, colleges everywhere businesses yeah. everywhere yeah. a train a train system that runs to everywhere yeah. um yeah. and here we have the colleges but mm. everything is far um yeah. like really far yeah we'll see hopefully we'll train yeah it's, a, it's sort of like that's same like london obviously it's the capital of the uk so you get quite a lot there but manchester is generally quite like it's still a capital it's like still a main big city but like mm. it is a bit spread out as well and you get quite a lot there portsmouth as much as it likes to claim it's a very diverse city it is not that diverse <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot a lot of like the outskirts where most of the pole studios are are in conservative areas so it mm. is very much a middle class white woman hobby generally mm. in the area i'm in and it's sort of like when you get to more inner city, whereas where that's where I live. Again, it's the poorer sort of area. But all of the sort of buildings to put a studio in are more expensive because they're like, oh, that's near where the shops are. So people want to go there. It's like, oh, but small businesses can't get in there. So how are you going to get any sort of trade? So Yeah. 
right? It's really hard. It's so hard, especially to, to find a perfect space for pole too. Mm. Yeah. But do you, have you started looking at spaces or, oh, you said like every beginning of the year, you like bring it up again. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> this year I did. This year I actually went and looked at a unit. So I've gone way more than I normally do. Um, <laughs> so I looked at one the other day, but the thing is with the UK is they have something called business rates. I don't know if it's similar in the US where you are charged basically 50% of your rate of your rent on top as a business and I think if it's under a certain value it's exempt from that and the place I looked at last year was exempt this year it's not so I was like it's not viable paying an extra 50 percent basically so but I knew that going into it um I sort of looked at it and I think I think it's gonna be a bit too big anyway but we we move we go look at it and the, the letting agent um like the realtor <laughs> was, was really nice and answered loads of questions for me so it meant that I felt a bit more confident that the next one that comes along I'm like right let's, let's go have a look but yeah, so it's, it's a very expensive first thing that I'm gonna have to do um and so the one thing I am doing at the moment which probably by the time the podcast comes out I hopefully should have done is set up a kickstarter to try and get like a little bit more funds in because the thing is that it's not just going to be Pole Studio, it will also be where Hoodlum Fang's offices are. So it's just going to be like everything in one place because at the moment I make Hoodlum Fang, everything I do with Hoodlum Fang is out of my home and I'm running out of space. So <laughs> need something bigger to put it all in. So hoping that everything sort of go in one, but then that does mean that it's a more expensive venture than little space, few poles it needs to be. A, b a bigger a bigger task so hopefully the community will be in my favor and even if they just give me a little bit of money please <laughs> it'll be fine yeah wow, that's crazy that it's so different out there just to start a studio i definitely wish you the best i i don't it's not that crazy out here is there i mean <laughs> You just have to find a space. I that's cool that they offer like if you don't make any money, they that you don't have to pay your rent. Is that what you said? No, it's um <laughs> you have your rent of the business, and mm -hmm. if it's under a certain value, you don't have to pay business rates, which is basically oh, okay. you pay the council or the the government for being a business. Which mm -hmm. let's say for example, if your rentable value of your business is twenty thousand, you then have to pay an extra ten thousand on top of that a year. Yeah. Got it. That's yeah, it, crazy. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so if it's under that you don't pay anything. So it's just finding okay. a space that's big enough that's under that. And yeah in Portsmouth anyway, because it's quite an expensive city to rent and live. It's sort of it's I think it's like one of the second most popular cities outside of London and most densely populated as well. So and because we're only about because London is basically where everything is the most expensive and then the further out you get the cheaper it is and we're only about an yeah. hour away so we're still in that sort of catchment of you could still commute to London if you wanted to it's like I really don't want to <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I don't have to I yeah, don't have to please no um so yeah we're still in that sort of catchment of expensiveness so got it <laughs> Right, it is hard to like find like the perfect location and the spot that will work for you, and then the yeah. ceiling height, and then you know. Yeah, but yeah, find <laughs> the transport links as well because not everyone drives. And exactly, yeah, yeah, man. But that's so exciting. That'll be so awesome to have your clothes and your studio in the same location. Yeah, like a like a mall, <laughs> like yeah. a mall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set up a oh. cot in the back and work like long shifts. <laughs> yeah, sort of like people coming to use the studio, and I'm just there at the sewing machine, like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. You will yeah. never leave there for sure. <laughs> no, <I just> <laughs> Who needs a house? I have a studio. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Oh, guys. Do you have any other plans for the future since we're on that, that realm? besides um, the studio not really that's about it to be honest with you like um yeah that, that is really that's really it sort of thing 
Um, that's a big plan. So like, yeah, that could be enough. Yeah, yeah, so I've never, I'm, I seem to, I say I've been in business for myself for at least 10 years nearly. So it's, it's generally the sort of thing that goals are generally sort of more business related more than life goals. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for an assistant. <laughs> I was going to mention that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you'll probably have to hire awesome. some people to help you once mm. you get your your mall opened. Yeah, I'm terrible at delegating though. That's the problem is because I've been oh, doing no. it for so long, so bad at it. So <laughs> that's going to be a task. Also, in my past, I've worked for small businesses as well that have been a bit like, oh, we can't afford to pay you just yet, and it's like I need to pay my rent. So can't really do that, and I don't want to hire someone and then get in that Love situation. You. <laughs> right right as a business owner you just have to make sure everyone else is taken care of yeah. first and then yeah, whatever's exactly. left <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much yeah and so, I, so i've worked with people that were very much like oh i can't afford to pay you and and then it's sort of like well you should have thought of that before i started this month so. yeah yeah <laughs> right that's so it's just more thing. planning it's just mm -hmm. more planning <laughs> yeah it's like no you just didn't want to do this work yourself that's why now i've done it and, <laughs> and yeah now I have to get nothing for it so thanks um so yeah i'm very reluctant when i when i have like a month where i've sort of been like oh this month was tough it would have been a lot harder if i had someone employed here jesus sort of thing and every time i do that it's a bit like maybe not this time maybe not now <laughs> yeah yeah right it's hard to gauge when it's the best time to like bring on yeah. help for sure um, chris do you want to ask your favorite question you're too funny <laughs> i was just thinking that too <laughs> what um goodness i know you went into the jade but do you have a favorite poe trick or poe nemesis that you're still like working on and you're like oh my god okay so favorite pole trick is very underrated flatline Scorpio because Love it, it. you can transition from so many things in it. It's nice and comfortable. Like you get loads of grip points. So if you sort of think, I don't know what to do from here, you can kind of just hang out in it for a bit. <laughs> You'll be quite happy. Um, I think it, I think it's very underrated. So I'm all, I'm always sort of like flatline Scorpio. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nemesis at the moment is Brass Monkey. I just cannot get that leg hook. It just, yeah. <laughs> as soon as I think, oh, that's it, because I normally do it from a genie. That's my best way of getting into it. I'll think, oh, actually, I have this hook. And then I'll start descending down. And I'm like, nope, it's gone. And by that point, I'm already descended down. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> so... Yeah, Br Brass Monkey is one to work on this year for sure. Have you tried it from a shoulder now yet? I have, but I find when I do that, I tend to scramble a bit and I don't get in the okay. right position because I'm too busy like, oh, I'm at the side of the pole and this is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I did manage the Brass Monkey seat the other day from yeah. um, Butterfly. Um, oh. I, I was... My, um, the studio I went to were teaching it and they said you need to have your extended butterfly for this and I was like oh boy I lost that a little while ago I don't know if I've still got it <laughs> but I actually had it so so that was fine so I've now got another entry as well so that if I do oh. end up going to the genie and descending slowly because I'm just yeah. nervous, at least I can go from the extended butterfly as well now so get, get I'm again, the again it's team slow pole, so yeah. <laughs> Too funny. I'm also on team slow pole. I feel the same way. Brass monkey sucks for me. I was gonna say there is a way from from flatline to brass monkey. Yes. I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, my 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 instructor at the studio I go to taught it recently, like to a couple of private lesson students. And I think when I get a little bit of cash in, I'm gonna go over there and be like, can we just do this? Yeah, because <laughs> I, I like, like I want to play with this. <laughs> yeah, right. Like from your favorite trick about, to your least favorite trick. Yeah, I'm about to touch yeah. that flatline to brass monkey. I feel like I've seen it, but I can't. It's a lot of it. twisting. You kind of have to sort of twist in the pole, and then sort of okay. take the leg off for a little bit, and then rehook it. Yeah, you're very precarious, and it's a lot of twisting. 
Yeah, my my butt yeah. always gets in the way. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've I think I've definitely seen it, but I've never had that may not be true. Maybe Paulina taught it like a year ago. Paulina, yeah, that's happened. what I was gonna say. Paulina put us into it, yeah. But yeah. she held on. I was gonna say she put you into it. She said, yeah. <laughs> she like <laughs> held on. My legs come completely Ooh. off and then I'm oh. like, ah. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. Try it I have seen I have seen that and thought someday. Yeah. So I think my, my issue with the brass monkey is I always sort of so I, I like to think of what, what would the um opposite version be if I struggle with one move one way, what would it be if it was the right side up? And one of my friends who's an instructor in Manchester, Raven, said, think of it as doing a um, figurehead or hood ornament upside down. And I was like, huh, okay. And I haven't tried it since then, but I'm like, right, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense in my brain. So if that helps anyone else that's struggling with brass monkey, it might do. Yeah. That's funny. In, um, our, in our studio, we have a picture of me and the figurehead, and then um, Marina, my business partner, upside down um, mm -hmm. in the <laughs> in the brass monkey. So it looks like it's balanced, but you're right; it is the same move. Yeah, yeah but I, I can find the figurehead, but I can't find brass monkey. Yeah, one of the things I one of the things my um, one of my students struggled with was just basic invert. Like they didn't know where to put their legs, and I was like, "It's a climb upside down," and they were like. Oh. and then they were fun <laughs> so so yeah how it helps for me it helps but i think it's if you're neurodivergent just thinking how do i do this the other way <laughs> yes quite helpful <laughs> excellent <laughs> do you do you have any advice for um beginner pole dancers or anyone who's maybe starting into like the pole fashion industry as well mm. So for pole dancers that are just sort of starting out, don't be scared to ask your instructor for variations or to go slower. I wish I had, and it probably would have saved me a lot of heartache of why can't I get this? Um, so that's my main advice to people. And also, if your journey is slower than other people's, it's, it's better to go slower than it is to rush into things, miss things, get bad habits and then have to unlearn those bad habits. So, and for anyone that's thinking about entering the pole industry for um, clothing, it's hard work. <laughs> it's, it, it's a lot of hard work, but if you feel like that there's something missing, like you feel like there's something that needs to be more inclusive about it that you could provide, go, give it a go, start small. Um, don't just think, oh, I'm just going to go great guns with this. Just slow burn. I think slow, slow burn businesses are kind of the way to go. Saying that, me, I'm going to just open a studio with everything in it. But <laughs> I, I like a slow burn. <laughs> well, no, but you, it's, it's ready. It's ready for the mall. Yeah. 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 Ready for my little shopping center. <laughs> yes, yes, you, I love it. Yes, you have been planning it for years. To be fair, <laughs> yeah. And I say when when Thank I went when I went and viewed that um unit the other day, I had a list of questions and I brought out my book like right, and the guy was a bit like, oh boy, I don't know the answers to all these, and I was like, oh, this means I'm prepared. That's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and thank you for sharing um the tip about asking for variations um because as instructors we should be offering those variations i mean it's even in the expert certification and others out there but sometimes i have been to classes where they're not offered and you're right don't be afraid to yeah. ask yeah. it is your workout you paid for it yeah because a lot of a lot of instructors will probably just sort of look around and go well everyone looks like they're getting it like even if they're mm -hmm. struggling with it um they're still getting it so or they'll sort of look around at the people that they know maybe more than anything and they'll sort of look around and go yeah everyone looks like they're happy no no one's asking me so i don't mm -hmm. need to offer it so i think that's the thing is they sort of, i think because you're sort of taught old oh, people will ask you because you're pay they're paying for it so they'll ask you no especially especially not in the uk we're far too polite sometimes, to ask people yeah. for anything <laughs> sometimes they're scared they don't want to bring up confrontation yeah. um 
they feel like they're telling the teacher how to do their job. I definitely yeah. understand. Yeah. Whereas me, I have a question. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Is there an easier way to do this? Always look around at everyone else and see me and go, you need help, don't you? Yes, please. Yeah. (laughs) You're so right, because you can see it when you actually take the time and look around. You can see the frustration. You can see the look in their eyes of wanting help but not knowing how to ask. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And thank you for also sharing the advice to um, people who are looking to get into the pole fashion industry because I think there wow. is, um, you know, a lack of diversity in pole wear in our area. So hopefully it'll inspire someone in our area to do what you have done. Yeah. And, and I, I, say I, I, do, I do get a lot of US customers that say there isn't anything on offer in the US. And like, it surprises me how massive it is. I'm like, surely there's someone that's doing yeah. that size inclusive poet somewhere i know there's a couple of like businesses whether they're still going that people used to buy from um that were a bit more inclusive or whether they've actually got on the route of pole as well and offered more like shorter shorts and stuff but yeah i'm always quite surprised with the amount of like us customers i get that are like literally this is my only option and it's Mm. quite a bit shipping but at least i get me so it, yeah. it's sad but true I've been thinking about it lately because um, I get a lot of my clothes from females from our pole studio and um, there's not much that you know makes it easy for me to poke yeah. <laughs> I, um, so I've been thinking about it but to go through the process of learning to sew like you went to school for it it's, just, it's scary like even just to make them for myself I would be happy yeah well, you might get a lot more U.S. orders after this comes out. I know, right? right. <laughs> Here's hoping. January is tough. That's the other piece of advice. January is tough. <laughs> right? Right after all of the holidays are over, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, now what? Yeah. Too funny. Now, now, now no one has any money. So, oh, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I think I think all of the questions that I had um were answered, Chris. If you have any more, oh, you're on mute, Chris. Oh, I know. I was talking, and then the dog started barking, and then I was yelling oh. at them. Um. <laughs> yeah, I I had to close my door today in case my cat started fighting. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I know they'll do it because I've done it before when I've taught like classes online, and it'll be loads of people that I haven't met before, and I'm like, hi everyone, and then you'll just suddenly hear, like, hold on one second, and I'll go out and I'm like, stop it. <laughs> well, that, Too yeah, funny. I'm never a professional. <laughs> oh. oh my god, I would have, I would have asked, is your cat in heat? <laughs> So they, just, like, they just hate each other and they just decide to fight at the most inconvenient think, time. Yeah, um, of course. That is too funny. Yeah, they're, they're both quite old and just crotchety Aww. old cats. So they're just <laughs> <laughs> right, I had to feed mine before we started so that they would, like, chill out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good chat. So I looked in my, my bedroom and they were both there and I was like, I don't know if you'll behave, so I'm going to shut the door anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, so thinking. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> oh wait, I just I thought of another it. question. How many pairs of shoes do you have? Because you, when you Too like scan funny. over to the left, there was so many more amazing shoes, and I love shoes. <laughs> They're all bright too. <laughs> right, I love them. So five pairs of boots and six pairs of heels that are all hung up. So the boots, there's, some, there's one pair of boots up there that I got second hand. That I think they are old school pleasers because they're so heavy. Like yeah. I swear they're made of wood because when you they can't, they sound like wood. They're so heavy. <laughs> they're they're like someone's painted like a a fire design on them, and I think so, someone was selling them for like fifty pounds. And I was like, I'm having those. I think I've worn them once because they're so heavy. <laughs> like, um, I just use them now because they look pretty. Um, and yeah, the. the <laughs> ankle boots styles from hella heels because 
I have short legs and they look best on my legs, the short ones, the shorter boots. So I every time they bring out a style that doesn't have the shorter boots, I'm like, please, will you make this in the shorter boot? Because it looks better on my short legs. <laughs> do, you, do you prefer the it. pleasers or the hella heel? Um, after the whole pole fitness shoe gate thing a few a little while ago, I sort of stuck with hella heels and I actually find them more comfortable on the arches. So I, I stick with hella heels, even though I have to have some really strange sizes, like my usual shoe size is a five and a half, but I have to take a seven in the boots yeah. and a six in the shoes. Ah. So, yeah. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> Yeah, when I bought my hell always... heels too, I had to get a weird a weird size so my foot would fit in it. <laughs> I've always wanted a pair, but my feet are a already big. I have to get fourteen or fifteen in woman, yeah. and then a very wide. And someone told me hell heels aren't that great for yeah. That's me. I have, I have, yeah, I have wide feet as well. That's why I think I have to go for the seven because otherwise it's sort of like oh, the sides of my feet are being crushed if I go. For the <laughs> so I go for the too seven. Too funny. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I was going to ask, because what do you, do you have free time and what do you like to do? On free time? <laughs> so free time is generally just self-care because <laughs> so I'm so busy. It's, so it's just chilling out. Um, I enjoy my baths. If I need to sort of relax and I'll just sort of disassociate in the bath for about an hour. I'm just quite happy, have, quite happy doing that. Um, I hang out with my partner. Um, we play board games every now and again. So, yeah, just gen just general chilling out, and <laughs> love it. That sounds perfect. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like a perfect balance. Yeah, I've never been a big hobby person anyway. So generally, if I'm like I want to do something, I'll be like I'll go to pole or I'll do some pole. <laughs> like we were, you know, we were talking about that. Um, yeah, right. And it's okay to have a hobby that's just like sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> what is your hobby? Napping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because people I love are it. Like, oh, say they were like, oh, do you sew for a hobby? I'm like, God, no. I do that all day <laughs> for work. Because this is why if anyone ever sees my Instagram, they're like, why is it that you're even never wearing the stuff you make or you wear the same sets all the time? Because like, I don't have time to make myself anything. <laughs> I'm making everyone else's. So... This is why I'm wearing generic stuff because I'm like, well, the stuff I made is in the wash, so. <laughs> but <laughs> too funny. That that's another that's another thing for 2013. That's one of the goals: make more pole wear for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that you don't make holes for you, <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> I, I just don't, I just don't have the time. I'll sort of like, oh yeah, I'll make that, and I'm like, oh god, I'm like, no, I don't. I'll do this. <laughs> I just, yeah, it's just, yeah, prioritize something else instead, and it's like oh, that's just not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> the same for it's the same for like most like um, pole web people as well. You'll notice that they sort of like they either have the same thing on all the time or they'll have something slightly different or they don't video themselves very often and they're just sort of like, I've had no time. <laughs> <laughs> no time to make this new thing for me. <laughs> right? Uh, Too funny. Well, hopefully you'll have time to convince <laughs> yeah. you to make a fabulous outfit um, for competition or... Yeah, that's, the, that's the next thing, actually. I'm, so when I do my next competition, which is the beginning of April... I will be making something for that, but yes, I can't wait to see. That's in the diary to actually do that. So, <laughs> in. do you have a song and everything picked out yet? I have the song, uh, but I don't have any sort of concrete routine. Yeah, because I don't like to do it too soon. I normally don't like to pick the song too early because I'm worried that I'll want to change it. But I think it's a good vibe um, for it, and it's funny. I um the person that organizes it said, oh, can everyone send their songs through if they know them so we don't get any duplicates? And I was like, do I need to send mine through? <laughs> because no one's going to know what it is. She's like, no, nah, you're fine. <laughs> no one's going to use the music that you use. 
Oh my god. <laughs> she's, also, she's also a fellow like metal music listener, so she's like, nah, I'll know what it is, but they won't. It's fine. <laughs> I kinda I kinda wanna ask what it is, but I won't have you blow up your spot before the competition. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just say it's um it's a UK based band and I think they've literally only got about two thousand followers on Instagram, so it's a small wow. band. The last two times I've done competitions actually it's been to songs by like bands that are based in the UK that are still like either their supports for bigger bands or their, their if they are headlining shows it's only for like a hundred people or so so mm -hmm. yeah Gen generally speaking that's what I tend to sort of gravitate towards because I'm like oh I like this no one else is going to use this one <laughs> <laughs> I love it too funny right that's awesome and then you're helping to promote other artists yes yeah without anyone even knowing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. Two artists in one. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love. Yeah. I appreciate that you do the dance in metal because I've always wanted to do a dance to like in this moment, which is a very heavy rock group, mm -hmm. uh, or like even Lacuna Coil. And oh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't like sold myself on it yet because you're right. Some people are like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> I, I, I rediscovered, I rediscovered Lacuna Coil the other day, and actually are truth so they're basically one of their main yeah. bands. quite easy to dance to i managed to do because I, I like to do a lot of freestyle i managed to do the whole song quite comfortably and i was like oh didn't really have any breaks because it has got a couple of breaks in the song where you can kind of be like i'm tired now i need to get on the floor yeah. <laughs> it has that so it's quite a good one so i recommend giving that one a our go. truth so, yeah. I haven't heard that one in years. Oh, I know, that's what I mean. Is it, just came up on, it just came up on Spotify and I was like, yes, this is a this is throwback. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I'm trying to think if I, I know anything. I think my extent of metal is like typo negative. Mm. Oh, I like, I to, I like Tool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah, good good luck dancing to tour <laughs> wait you did do a sexy flow to it yeah, right that was yeah. good to skip ah, that was nice. cute yeah. i had to edit that, that, that song it was so hard to edit yeah I, ever. <laughs> yeah i i did a, a de i did death tones passenger a while ago that's a <laughs> six and a half minute song but obviously i had to edit it down for like yeah. to fit it into the competition and yeah, that was a bit like, because the intro to that song is like at least 30 seconds anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. If you've, if you've only got three and a half minutes for your routine, you're a bit like, well, <laughs> that's, that's, it. It. that's another thing as well with dancing to metal. All these competitions are like, oh, you only get three and a half minutes. I'm like, what metal song is less than four minutes? I, I know, I'm right? Sorry. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> right, Not they take much, you on a no. journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I generally, if I have like a competition where it's like, oh, you're only allowed three minutes, three and a half, I pick like a, a punk song because it's just easier. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't have to edit it, it's fine. <laughs> Maybe we should search for a think full length whole operas to metal songs. <laughs> Light Wish, it's a rock opera yeah. group. <laughs> <laughs> oh I love it. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, oh we didn't ask about your um what type of bowl and hand grip do you use body and so, hand grip. so for my legs and generally sometimes my sides i use dew point so that's the one that makes you sticky for my hands i don't use grip for my hands because i have dry skin so no. i generally i i use dry hands religiously for years and for why is this not working and then i don't even know what stopped me using it i just sort of i think i just forgot to buy it once and thought oh well i seem to be doing all right without it and then i sort <laughs> of like look think about my hands especially in the winter and i'm like they're so dry especially from doing a lot of sewing as well and takes a lot of the moisture out of them so uh that, that of during the pandemic um, well, when when we were allowed out of the first lockdown, when I went back to the studio, uh, the studio I went to had like hand sanitizer at every pole, like a little bottle, and I, we put that on, and everyone else was like, "Oh, it's really, I'm slipping now." 
I got really sticky because it's obviously just alcohol and okay. glycerin. So I was fine. Hand sanitizer for me is if I'm like, <laughs> right, I'm going to go either wash my hands or if I can't wash my hands, hand sanitizer. So cheap pole grip. That is awesome. That's too funny. Yeah. <laughs> There's not, there's not, not a, there isn't really any pole grips on the market for if you have dry hands. It's always, oh, sweaty hands, wet hands. I'm like, I don't have that mm -hmm. problem. My hands are dry. This is this yeah. is my issue. I have to warm them up more than anything. So if they get yeah. cold, warm them up. So. Wow, I can't imagine what it must feel like to just be ready to like hold on to the pole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because if, if I, I, did a, I did a performance at the university a little while ago, and they're like, oh, do you want us to grip the pole? I'm like, no, just clean it. Because literally, they, some of them were like caked in dry hands. I was like, yeah. poles, because I'm going to die. of <laughs> All that dry hands on them, no. Please, please just clean them with some alcohol. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, surpri I'm surprised they asked you. They should, and they didn't just do it. Aren't we supposed to just do it as a comic courtesy? Just clean oh. the pole? No, wow. no, because they were they were university students. They hadn't really. They host. So I think some of them had hosted, hosted them before. They just asked if I wanted it, like, um, if they, if I wanted it actually gripped, and I was like, mm -mm, just clean it and wow. give it good clean. And they were like, okay. <laughs> wow, so interesting. Mm. Man, that'd be cool if someone would grip my pole. <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> Pro provide a service. Would you grip my pole before I begin? <laughs> I'm sorry. As a guy, my mind was. <laughs> I was like, I don't know yeah. if I can say that to yeah. someone. <laughs> my partner's downstairs. You probably heard me say that and went, nah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, my I'm like, goodness! I'm gonna go up to the top and see if it was slippery for me. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm just gonna randomly say, "Can you can you grip my pole?" It seems so sad. <laughs> Do you see what sort of reaction you get from people? And you're like, "I innocently mean this one." What did you think? <laughs> yes, exactly. Your I mean, mind like <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. Too funny! Wow, that is cool. Interesting. We have pole cleaners. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. You, you generally do at competitions. It's normally people that volunteer as well, so they're not. <laughs> yeah. <And it's> normally, <laughs> yeah. You sort of give that to It's normally students. Like, do you want to get better at your climbs? I'm gonna be a volunteer <laughs> this competition, and it's so like basically a way of getting people to do stuff for free. Which <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. I know in PSO they had to add uh, a add a line because people were signing up and they couldn't handle it. And they're like, make sure you can climb multiple times for at least an hour. Or two. Right. <laughs> it's like up and down like at least twenty times. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. shins were like bloody. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't that hasn't been the job. God. No. I so said I I did think about it once and I thought. How many competitors are there? And it was sort of like, there right? like 30 competitors. And it's like, that means I've got to climb the pole, <laughs> got to go up once and clean it, yeah. and slowly come down, then go up there again if they want grip as well. Like, nah. uh, and they're tall as well. They're tall poles as well, like when you do competitions. So it's sort of like, oh, God, I've got to get all the way to the top in case they decide they want to do a death lay. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> right, that's much more work than just cleaning. Man, mm. I think I I might do that still. Still though, I like being the in between the show person. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I like being sort of towards the beginning, and but now I'm instructor, I have to be more towards the end, and yeah, it's a bit like oh god. But I, I tend to find that I'm the one backstage when everyone else is freaking out. I'm just there like, we've got yeah. this, we'll be fine. Right. Um, yeah, we, we'll, we'll be fine sort of thing. Like, I'm just the, the supportive one. I'm like, I don't care if I win or lose. I'm just here for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so I found that when I used to do intermediate before I became an instructor, everyone was really serious. And mm -hmm. I'd be there like, how is everyone? We've got this. And they'd all be sort of like giving me side eye. I'm like, I'm literally the least competitive person ever. It's... Uh, I, I don't care if I win or lose. 
Whereas I think when you get to an instructor level, you seem to care less. You're more like, this is a fun day out. <laughs> so. We're so very true. Yes. <laughs> so very true. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely start to care less. <laughs> when I first started, I was like, I gotta win. Now I'm just like, oh, I just want to dance. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. I just want to dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think that was all my, my questions and all extra questions that I thought. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, I guess I have one, um, because you mentioned that you are autistic and I think it's important to ask and share. Do you have any advice for other um autistic pole dancers out there, or pole dance instructors, or people who may be autistic who want to start pole dancing and are scared? Um, I think finding an instructor that sort of gets it um, is very important. Um, I mean, a lot of like people that are on the spectrum sort of have a bit more of an understanding of their learning style, what sort of works for them. I know for me, I'm um, not diagnosed, but it's very obvious from things that have happened to me in my in my childhood and also what happened to me on the frequency of my life um that I learn by listening and I think quite a few people that are on the spectrum have that sort of they learn by sort of breaking things down one by one by one so I think having instructors that very much break things down or at least give you space to try things rather than go right we're going to go on to the next thing because your brain's there and you're a bit like, no, no, want, want this. I want to do that. I don't want to do the next thing. So making, sort of giving people a bit of breathing room to sort of try things a bit more. Um, for instructors or people that think about becoming instructors, you will find people that vibe with how you are teaching. So whether it is because of your neurodivergency or whether it's for whatever reason, like as I say, I explain things a lot. I talk things to death. So I do have a couple of pole dancers that are either um, uh, have issues with their sight or are blind because the way, because I talk it through so much, they can visualize it better. Um, so having that thing that maybe society sees as, oh, that's a negative for you. It's like, mm -mm, no, this is a positive for someone else. So and if anyone is on the spectrum thinking of trying pole, so this is the thing, it's hard because everyone's different in whether they're more outgoing or if they're a bit more introverted. And it's just the same for everyone. Just sort of give it a go and see what happens. The worst thing that's going to happen is you don't like it or you don't vibe with the studio. You have no obligation to go back there. You have no loyalty to them. You can give it a go and go, I liked it but I wasn't a fan of the teaching style, so I'll find somewhere else. Or you can say, I wasn't a fan of the teaching style because of this. Do they have another instructor that is a bit more, does a bit more of the talk side of it, or maybe um, does more demos or whatever whatever thing that you felt that you needed, basically. So, so yeah, uh, just give it a go and don't be afraid to, again, it's the same with, um, my advice for beginners, don't be afraid to ask variations. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yes. Right. And it's important to find the instructor that understands, you know, what's going on too, because everyone is so different. And mm. if you I need know, the right. extra time and space um, to learn the trick, that they should see that and make that opportunity available. I think as well for instructors that aren't, it's probably more advice for autist, uh, for instructors that aren't on the spectrum or don't believe they are um, neurodivergent in any way, is to understand that there's a lot of different variations of that neurodivergency. Like there's people that are dyspraxic. There are people that, um, like my partner, for instance, I've been teaching him some pole recently and he's heavily dyspraxic. Like he struggles a lot with, I, I tend to, when we're out in public, he's not, overly aware of his body I find myself moving him sometimes if he's ready to knock something over I'm like no come here <laughs> um it, yeah he's done quite well with learning poems because of the way I've been breaking things down he remembers it even though his body doesn't the brain remembers so it tells the body what it needs to do 
Um, so yeah, I think having that understanding that there are people that do have different learning difficulties and or not necessarily di difficulties, but differences, learning differences is probably more the correct term. So, cause obviously you do get neurotypical people as well that are like, I just like to do it. And it's like, okay, <laughs> but I have to show you first. <laughs> Right, right. Everyone's all over. And there's been several times where like, um, you know, some teachers will be like, you can't like do it while I'm doing it. But some people, they really need to do it while as as soon as you're doing it, like even before you've explained it. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I find I have a lot of my students, the university ones, especially I see them holding like this, like not necessarily there's a pole there, but they'll just be and they'll put their feet in the position. Yep. As That's me. Sort of doing it with the ghost pole, and I'm like, yes, because yeah. I know that that's that that's how they learn. So I'm like, yes, keep doing that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, pole is so for everyone, and there's so many different styles and aesthetics and everything, and it's so beautiful that um, when teachers take the time to be patient. Yes. Um, and also the students do to be patient with themselves. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I had this the other day. I had one, I have to share, so I told someone else the other day, of one of my uni students, it was literally like her second lesson and she wasn't doing as well. And she went, oh, well, today's just not my day, not my session today. And she, they're like 19. I, when I was 19, if I couldn't do something, I would have cried and not ever done it again. Whereas she's just had the maturity to go, today is just not the day for me, not my session today. And I was sort of like, how are you so mature? <laughs> You're like 19. <laughs> Whereas when I started pole when I was 23 and I'm there just sort of like, I can't do it. But I'm, oh, I'm quitting forever. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, I'm <laughs> always so relieved when when students are able to understand that too, because like not every day is good. Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah, as long as you like make the effort, you still dedicated yourself to your practice. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you hung out with your pole friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think unless you wanted to add any more, um tidbits of advice or anything in closing we'll have all of your links and everything and if you have that kickstarter link as well we can share that to, to help you start so, your studio yeah so uh, basically everywhere that you can find me and everywhere basically i, I, don't, I don't think i have any more advice i've forgotten probably most of my <laughs> uh, info dump um <laughs> um so Obviously, you can find me at Hoodlum Fang for clothing. I ship worldwide. Everything is made to order. I also offer custom prints as well. And so if anyone's ever thinking about doing a competition and you need something in particular, I am, I am there for you. Um, I also do custom studio wear as well. So if you're thinking about ever getting uniforms for your studio, that is also something I offer. Um, and also you can find me at my personal Instagram which has basically turned into my instructor Instagram because I don't know how to switch off from work, <laughs> which is clo uh, underscore a underscore mood. Um, you can message me on there for private lessons and things. Uh, Pole Studio, I'm still working on the name. I'm still thinking about it. I've, I've got it in my head, but I'm still um and anaring about whether I want to, that's what I want to call it or not, because it's going to be like the main baby. I'm overthinking it. But there will be a Kickstarter link for anyone that feels that what I've said resonates with them and they want to support um, to help get a bit of inclusivity in fitness in Portsmouth, basically, because it's lacking a little bit. Um, even, I say even I was talking to the um, Lettig agent and he said, to be fair, the council, the lo local government need to do more for inclusive and queer businesses because they don't do a lot so so yeah any any support would be great so that I don't have to try and harass the council for money <laughs> would be would be best thank you <laughs> but yeah all links will be sent <laughs> awesome thank you so, thank much. You so much Chloe <laughs> this is so much fun Yes, thank yeah, you. Sure, this is probably, probably going to be one of your longest episodes to date because I don't know <laughs> when to shut up. So, <laughs> but 
for anyone that's oh. stuck around this long deserves a treat <laughs> you are too this isn't that bad treat. we've had we've had some pretty long ones this was yeah. fun for sure <laughs> Oh, that makes me yeah. feel yeah. I'm like looking at the time like oh Jesus I've just been no worries <laughs> yeah no it's worries all about wonderful me. information and yeah. inspiring too so it's not <laughs> it was, was fun cool. it was like a conversation yeah. yes <laughs> so I, oh, gee, that... I now have a reason to like travel over to the UK Yay. Yes. I never I never wanted to visit London. It was it was never one thing for me, but I will visit where you Portland, right? Ports Portsmouth. Ports, yes. Ports, yes. Ports, yeah. Oh and gee. Mm. That sounds fun. <laughs> I have a password and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Let's add it to our tour. Yes. Oh my god, yes, we could visit their studio. Oh, when you have it open. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. And I then after that. you do open it, we, we can um, interview you again and take a, a virtual tour of your studio because yeah. you've been doing that this year yeah. too. Yeah. That'd be great. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you need to get a passport. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, I have one. I have one. <laughs> I have one too. Yeah. It's just sitting there with dust all over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, thank you again, Chloe, so much for, for taking the time to share your story. And okay. and I'm sure your story is going to inspire a lot of people. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. I, hope, yeah, I hope people have taken things and go, yes, I'm going to do the thing now because that, that's that's the goal. So, yes, thank you for having me. Yeah, hey. thank you. And thank you for all you are doing to try to make the world more inclusive because oh, yeah. We all have to do our parts in all our little cities and towns. It yeah. really does add up. So thank you so much for that. Yes. And on that note, I guess we should sign out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My, name work is... all day. <laughs> My name is Mandy Mack. <laughs> and I am Chris Rivers. We're here with Kolo and we are Paul on the call. Signing out. Ooh, Ooh, Chris. We are signing off. Love I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Yes, they are taped up. I love it. Yeah, beat up white, white laces and the little bat wings as well on them. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, that is just awesome! <laughs> oh my gosh.